All right, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at AWS reInvent and super excited to be with Chris again on the Robert Show. Super oh. excited to chat with you. Yeah, it's great to see you again. Yes, and uh, Chris is the field CTO at uh, Immuta. So super excited to be learning about you know the different things that are happening at Immuta, but not only just that. What do you think about the vibe of also AWS reInvent? So this is the first time I've been at reInvent. Nice. And uh, this show is massive, massive compared to any other show I've been, <laughs> been at. Um, so it's pretty exciting to see. Um, got to watch some of the um, keynote earlier today. Yep. yep. Um, and all the stuff that's going on with Bedrock and all the AI, uh, Gen AI things that are going on there. So uh, yeah, it's a really interesting show. That's awesome. And uh, I'm kind of also wanting to learn a little about you know what's happening at Immuta. I know you've been working on the public sector side, yep. zero trust. There's a lot to discuss today. So um, uh, wanting to the first learn about what's happening at Immuta, what's exciting? Yeah, so uh, with Immuta, actually two really big things. One, we're starting to expand out the connectors that we can connect, yep. can protect. Uh, we obviously just announced that we're going to be working with Lake Formation now. Yeah. So, which is, which is great for us because now it opens up Athena and EMR um, cool. as two data sources that we can, or compute platforms we can now protect data in, mm. uh, which a lot of my customers, especially in public sector, use, um, especially Athena, because they want to get to their old relational data stores like Oracle and Postgres True. and things like that running on RDS. And so now we can give them a way to actually do that. And the other thing which I am super excited about is our data marketplace. Um, and so this is a place to where we can allow people to publish in data products, right? And allow pe uh, data consumers to come in and easily get uh, data provision to them. Mm. So it's basically adding a light, better lightweight data catalog that we've always had, yep. very focused on these analytical use cases, mm. um, to be able to go in, um, find requests, gain access um, to the data, and be able to actually audit all that um, process and, and the workflows that go along with it. Love that. Uh, I'm kind of seeing a lot of innovations and a lot of, you know, obviously, uh, partnership uh, that kind of also kind of comes into the play. Yep. Uh, also wanting to learn about a little about Zero Trust. So how uh, has the Zero Trust mandate changed how public sector organization apply data security in the policy? Yeah, absolutely. Um, when that mandate came out a few years ago, um, obviously there's a maturity scale and you have to start someplace. Yeah. And what we saw is that we saw all the public sector customers really start at the infrastructure layer. And where they really started focusing in on the infrastructure layer is they really started implementing ABAC, so attribute-based access control, making sure that individual users are getting um, access and authorized to each of these systems. Right. And what's great for us now is that now that they've kind of started at the infrastructure, they've gotten um, applications working, yep. they're now bringing that to the data. So they're finally getting to the data pillar and all the three pillars or four pillars, I think it is, within the yeah. zero trust um, uh, model there, and so now they're looking to us to be like, okay, how do we bring the same models of using attribute-based access control so we can actually see what users are really doing, audit what all those users are doing within the system, and making sure every time they query that they're being authorized, right? Mm. It's not, hey, we're going to trust you for the next hour um, because that doesn't work well enough. Yeah. And especially when we've seen lots of different um, insider threat things. I mean, you go back to like Edward Snowden, mm. right? Very famous. Giving him an, an hour of free reign on the system is not a good idea. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree 100%. Uh, that's something, you know, which is pretty interesting. I'm kind of also curious to learn about how is Immuta helping organizations achieve zero, zero trust maturity in the data pillar? Like, what's, yeah, what's, absolutely. what's so, the, or, you know, yeah. the arrangement there? Yeah, so what we're, so what's great is that Muta uses that attribute-based access control. We are now enabling customers to move away from these service accounts um, nice. to where, you know, as a user, I have I query the data, but I'm querying the data as a service account. And out of the thousands of users using that data, that service account, I don't know exactly who's making that query at that point <laughs> in time, right? right? And so now I have to aggregate a bunch of logs together. Now that they can actually take away that service account, have users use their BI dashboards have they, as they do today, but now they're the ones who are querying into the data. So now I can see exactly who made that query, when they meet, made that query, and, I'm ab and we're able to move them actually up the maturity scale mm. because we're able to automate out all that um, auditing, but also the enforcement of the policy. So as things change with the data or things change without the user, uh, maybe they moved right. into a different department, we can turn on and off all that, um, the data access for them. Mm. I'm kind of also wanting to know a little about, you know, about data sharing. So why is it 
that data sharing is so important in public sector? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, so a couple use cases. So, you know, obviously public sector is huge. It covers everything from finance to healthcare yeah. and e environmental things. And so kind of taking the idea of like research within medical community, mm -hmm. um, you know, there are so many studies that happen from like NIH that you know, that data needs to be um, brought together and it needs to be shared out to researchers at all different types of universities. Because it's been paid for publicly, yep. these people should get access to it. So being able to uh, share out that data but strip out all the PII is extremely important to be able to advance um, you know, medical research for health, yep. new drugs, and things of that nature. Also within like the Department of Defense and intelligence agencies, right? Yep. There's lots of not great things going on in the world today. <laughs> yeah. And so the United States has to work with uh, non-traditional partners mm. um, to be able to you know, help fight wars, to help um, you know, protect you know, people like right. Ukraine and things like that. And so we need to be able to share all this very secretive data yeah. across people who normally we're not like best friends with, yeah. right? So it's very different sharing with England versus, you know, you know, some other random country exactly. in, in the Eastern Europe. So we need to be able to share that and do that security, and that happens dynamically, right? Yeah, it's something which is a challenge for sure. Which is you know, and it has it takes its own time as well. Yes. When you're looking at data sharing, I kind of feel. But those are fantastic insights. Thanks for sharing that, uh, Chris. One more quick question. So how has Immuta helped organization implement zero trust, and you know the principles to share data and democratize data more effectively. Are there any best practices? Yeah. So, um, like one of my favorite use cases is that we uh, within um, within the Air Force they have a shared data platform. Yeah. Um, and we have a customer on that platform that does all the financial management stuff. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that happened when they were implemented in Muta was that she was able to um, actually start doing all the data work herself with her staff yep. who are not technical. So these people are used wow. to using tools like um, they use Data IQ um, for doing a lot of ETL yep. um, types of work. They use Tableau for reporting, right? And so what's nice is that when they inserted Immuta into the um, architecture, those tools all worked normally as they did before. And how she was doing security was that she had multiple data tenants for each of her customers to separate out the data. So that was all you know, ETL to all these different jobs. Yep. And so with Amita, she was able to collapse all that into a single place, yep. simplify her data platforms with Data IQ, yep. but still allow all of her um, business analysts to use the existing tools that are low code, no code, to be able to create the reports that she needed to, but still protect PII, still protect um, Very trade important. secrets between yeah. like different contractors. So this is Air Force, so like, um, like a Lockheed Martin and the Boeing in the same environment, exactly. and they can't see their own data. Yeah. So, um, and she's doing that, again, based on those zero trust principles that everyone is authorized at point of query, right? We are automating that so she gets to the optimal level of, on the maturity scale. Yep, no, I think uh, those are fantastic insights and uh, very much a good use case to you know share with our audience. So uh, one last question for you, Chris, is I'm pretty sure our audience always loves all the insights that you share. So if they want to reach out to you, learn more about you know zero trust, data security, data sharing, yep. where can they do that? Is LinkedIn a best place, Twitter, where can yeah, they? Yeah, you can find me easily on LinkedIn, well, I won't say easy because Chris Brown is pretty, <laughs> pretty common name. But I'll tag you, Chris, so I'll make Chris, it easy. Yeah. Chris, yeah. Chris Brown to Muta, you'll definitely find me um, yep. on LinkedIn is the best place to get in touch. Okay, fantastic. So you know where to reach out to Chris. Chris, again, such a pleasure hosting you on The Robert Show and definitely looking forward to keep the conversation going. Yeah, I love being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.